Hi everybody, welcome back. We're looking today at Jeremy Duff's Elements of New Testament Greek. We have got to the end of chapter three, and so what I want to do for you now is to give you a little bit of help with the one thing that most students of Greek hate more than anything else, that is remembering the vocab. Now, one of the easiest ways to remember the vocabulary uh, of a foreign language uh, is by just some kind of mnemonic, some kind of trick or some phrase or some little word association that helps you to recall it. And with these things, um, the ideal is something which appeals to you personally. So if you've already got a mnemonic that helps you to remember some of these, uh, some of this new vocabulary, then whatever you do, don't change it and start trying to use mine, just stick with what you've got. But if you're struggling to remember some of this vocabulary at the end of chapter three, pages 40 and 41, let me give you some things that helped me and they might appeal to you and it might at least make the process of trying to grind through this 20 or 30 words or so a little bit less tedious than it would otherwise be. So without further ado, um, here goes. So uh, page 40, agape, love. Well, look, come on, is there anybody who doesn't know that agape is one of the Greek words for love? That one, you're not having a mnemonic for that. If you don't know that, you need to just, you know, listen to more sermons or something. Adelphair, now this is an interesting one. Adelphair and the masculine uh, equivalent, Adelphos. Adelphos means brother, Adelphair means sister. How do you remember this? Well, do you remember the old uh, uh, comedy show, Only Fools and Horses? It's uh, centered around two brothers, Rodney and Del Boy. So I always used to think Del, brother, Adelphos, and the female version, Adelphair, because it's got the feminine ending. So Adelphos, Adelphair. Arcare means beginning. Well, it means beginning first, perhaps also sometimes it means the chief one of something, but the beginning, the head, the first, think Archangel. Archangel is the first angel, the, the leading angel, the senior angel, so Archair, first beginning and so on. Gare, very easy, uh, means earth, soil, land. Gare, from which we get geology, the study of the ground or uh, rocks and stuff. Geography, the study of landscapes and places. Gare, earth, land, soil, very easy. Zoe, well, sorry, Zoe is what it says in Greek. I always think Zoe because there's a girl at church called Zoe who's extremely lively. And Zoe means life. Zoe, Lively, so air, life. Run with that if you like. Phone air, very easy one. You've already got a mnemonic for this, I'm sure. You pick up the phone because you want to hear somebody's voice or the sound of their voice. Phone air means sound or voice. And psuche, soul or self, or psuche from which we get psychology, the study of the soul, the mind. Very easy to remember that one. A trickier one, hamartia. Hamartia means sin. Well, I, when I was a kid, I used to hate ham sandwiches. Love cheese sandwiches, hate ham sandwiches. So I always used to think it was a sin when my mum put ham, artia, ham sandwiches in my lunchbox. Hamartia, sin. Maybe that'll help you. Basileia uh, means reign, kingship or kingdom. Uh, well, uh, a basilica, a great glorious church, wonderful big church, is a church fit for a king. Kingdom, king, basileia. The other words that have the same kind of a similar or very very similar or the same stem basil uh, with some other kind of ending on it uh, means something related to king or kingship or kingdom, and we'll come across those later. So it's useful to remember that. Ecclesia, well, ecclesia means church or congregation or assembly. It can actually be a civil assembly as well as a. Uh, uh, um, a church assembly, so to speak, a, a religious assembly, but in the New Testament, most of the time, it refers to the, the Church of Christ. Well, ecclesiastic, that's the easiest way to remember that. Ecclesiastical things are churchly things, so ecclesia, church. And hermera, another tricky one, until I realised when I was teaching my daughters one day that both of them have very long hair and both of them need to, to brush their hair every day. Hermera day. Hammer day. There we are. Okay, top of the page 41. We're not even halfway through yet. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I'm not. Right, cardia, heart. Cardia, cardiac. Cardiac arrest means your heart stopped. God forbid that ever happens to you or anyone you love. But there it is, cardiac, heart. Maria, very easy. Mary, also the Hebrew form, Mariam. Mary, that's easier. Hora, hour or occasion. Hora just sounds like hour, doesn't it? And then you need to extend in your mind the idea that the hour had come, the occasion had come. So hora hour. Oikia, this is a tricky one, um, means house or household. So what I want you to do is to imagine that maybe after church one Sunday, you've got a bunch of kids from the Sunday school round to your house to watch a film or something. And they're all, they've got um, uh, their feet all over your furniture and sweets and stuff all over your sofa. And you say, oi, you bunch of little oiks, oiks. Get your feet off my furniture, not in my house, okay? You with me? Okay, almost, right. So oiks, 
it's, a, it's not supposed to be a rude word, but a, little, a way of describing children who are behaving badly, and you don't want little oiks in your house. Oikia, house, household. Okay, doxa means splendor or glory. Uh, doxa, doxology, uh, the, the way it's a, uh, a, a phrase or a set of phrases or something we sing to give glory to God and to reflect on God's splendor. Doxology, to praise or glorify God. Thalassa means sea or lake. Well, I've got a couple for this. Here in Southgate in North London, there used to be a seafood restaurant called Thalassa. That might not help you. There's a lot of Greek people who live around here, Greek Cypriots who've moved here in um, decades past. Might not help you, but I'll take a look at the word itself. Um, it means sea or lake. And you can kid yourself, can't you, that there is a bit of lake in there. Thalassa, lake, and sea. Thalassa, thalassa, sea or lake. Maybe that helps you. Okay, on to these neuter nouns. Nouns like ergon. Um, well, we'll come to that in a moment. Let's do them in the order they're here. Biblion, book or scroll. Biblion, Bible, book. Uh, incidentally, I think I would prefer generally to translate Biblion as scroll for the simple reason that books, as we now know them, like this, hadn't been invented in the first century. So when you're coming across it in a text like scripture, it doesn't seem to make sense to me to translate it as book. Scroll would be better, I think, because they were scrolls. Um, nonetheless, uh, often you'll find it translated as books, I guess, just to give uh, modern readers a sense of it's the thing that you read, whereas nowadays people don't read scrolls, so it's a way of contemporanizing it, I suppose. But anyway, Biblion, book, scroll. Diamonion, demon, very easy. The, it's just too similar for it to be difficult, isn't it? Ergon, well, um, an erg is an old-fashioned measure of energy or work, and ergon means work or deed. If that doesn't help you, uh, maybe a rowing analogy will. An ergometer is a thing that you sit on, which is um, it's like a rowing machine, and you do your ergs on the ergometer, and it's exhausting. You have to work hard to do your ergs. If that doesn't help, then maybe this one will. If something is really hard work, what do you say? You go, erg. Erg, hard work, deed. Maybe that helps. Euangelion, good news, very easy, from which we get evangelical, um, meaning related to the gospel. So an evangelical church is a church that proclaims the gospel, which all churches should. And so in one sense, all churches are evangelical if they proclaim the gospel like that. But euangelion, evangelical, gospel, good news. Hieron, temple. Hieron is a tricky one. Um, I think the best mnemonic I came up with is realizing that if you're looking at the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem, it's very high. And so you're looking higher up there, here up there, here on, high up the temple. Ployon, another tricky one, um, the front of a boat. Imagine the front of a boat and it plows its way through the water, carving the water out either side, much like a plow plows through the soil on a field. So ployon, boat plows its way through the water, ploy on, plow. Prosopon, you put soap on your face, prosopon, face. Sabaton, easy, Sabbath. Sermeon, sign, miracle. Ser, sign, neon, miracle. It's not too difficult, I think, once you see that word association. And then technon, well, when I was a kid, uh, I used to love playing with Lego, especially that kind of Lego that had all the technical bits in it, Technic Lego with all the holes and the spindles and the cogs and gears and so on. So child, Technon, likes playing with Technic Lego. Technon, Technic, child, Technon, child. Okay, um, Autos, I don't have a mnemonic for that, but uh, to be honest, if you can't remember that that means um, he, she, it, then you're going to be in trouble because you're going to come across that so often that it's a bit like Kai and Hot. If you can't remember that, then give up already. Okay, three names. Iesus, Paulos, Petros. Again, I hope you don't need any help learning those. And one final one, um, a verb, pistuo, which takes the dative as its object. I have not come up with a mnemonic for pistuo. So if you have got this far in the video and you can want to send me a mnemonic that works for you for pistuo, then I'll happily feature it in a video all of its own and I'll even tell the world who you are who was bothered <laughs> to email me or stick a, a comment in the box below to let me know what your best mnemonic is for the verb pistuo. Okay, that's your lot. That's the vocabulary for the end of chapter three. If you got this far in Duff, you're doing really well. Well done, keep going. 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, five, six days a week, and we'll have you reading the New Testament in no time. Uh, next video, we'll look at some of the exercises in section A, and then we'll be on to chapter four, pre prepositions. Keep going, God bless. See you next time. Bye for now.